Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual America House cave floor. If you were missing trips and visiting different places all over the world, then you are in the right place, and I encourage you to stay with us. This American Studies Club session is definitely you are looking for. My name is Maria, and I'm America House Program Assistant here at America House Cave and your host for this evening, welcome. Tonight we will have a special guest speaker, William Dixon. William works as an information management officer at the United States Embassy in Kyiv. He served in the US Navy for over 23 years with a specialty in telecommunications and information systems. Before arriving to Ukraine, William has worked for U.S. embassies in cities all over the world and in different cities such as Ashgabat, Stockholm, Kabul, Hart, Copenhagen, Hanoi, and Paris. And I'm sure William has lots to share with you guys about traveling, opening new places, meeting new people, and living in different countries, of course. Please feel free to leave your comments, questions, or just reflections on the places or cities that you'd like to go to. You can write your questions in the comment section here below the stream, and I will pass them to William. In America, Ukraine, or other countries, let's remind us that awesome and unforgettable, really unforgettable feeling of the open road. Meanwhile, let's have a ritual trip because you should know that everything is possible here at America House and this slogan is even written on my t-shirt. Okay, no more talks from my side and please meet and greet William. William, the floor is yours. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you very much for the introduction. Good evening, everyone. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to share this, uh, this road trip across the USA with you. Um, and give you a little bit of background on uh, uh, what uh, what sort of prompted it. Um, I uh, I was uh, was posted. I worked in Italy for about uh, five years in the early '90s. I met my wife there, and we got married. <clears throat> and in uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1996, we traveled from Italy to the United States. It was her first trip to the United States ever. And it was the first time that I had been at home um, for about two or three years. And so we took about, um, about six to eight weeks off. Uh, we flew to LaGuardia um, in New York City um, and then caught a train up to, uh, to Danvers, uh, Massachusetts where uh, we met my friend. And um, we spent a few days with him, and then we went to New Hampshire to purchase um, a small Suzuki, which we uh, used uh, to drive across America. So our route was down the eastern seaboard, um, uh, down, down, down the eastern seaboard, and down the southern uh, border of the United States, and then up the western seaboard, all the way up to British Columbia. Um, and then after that, um, we drove from British Columbia back down to California, um, where, um, where my wife uh, um, went to live. It was her first time to meet my mother. And so um, she lived there while I um, was in San Diego attending um, some, uh, some military schools. So uh, let me go ahead and um, forward, you know, forward across the slides and, and I'll... Uh, narrate uh, the various shots. So um, <clears throat> right here, I just kind of wanted to share uh, with you some of the, uh, some of the icons um, in the various uh, American cities. And as you can see uh, up on the West Coast, we have uh, some icons that you may perhaps be familiar with. Uh, up in the Northwest, we have um, the Seattle Space Needle, and um, let me see here, if you move down south, you know, there, there's lots of, tum, uh, lots of lumber, lots of timber, you know, forest there. And that's why we have that, uh, uh, that lumberjack um, that is just to the right of the narwhal. And that's the whale with the tusk um, coming from its snout. Head down a little bit further and you have, uh, you have a killer whale down towards, uh, down towards, uh, 
that's probably Southern California around the San Diego area. And um, yeah, and, and usually when I have an audience, you know, that's, uh, that's actually there in front of me, I would, um, I would typically prompt um, to see if people recognized certain icons. Um, but in this case, I guess we're not as interactive, so I'll go ahead and, and, and move on. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and move to the next slide. And so, um, so as I mentioned, um, we had flown from Italy. I was actually, we were actually living in Italy, um, down in Southern Italy. Um, and it was 96, we had just gotten married. And so we flew from um, Italy to the East coast of the United States to, to JFK in uh, LaGuardia, New York. Um, and then we went um, North from there to, um, to uh, Massachusetts and then up to New Hampshire. And then we traveled down the Eastern seaboard, right? Down the Eastern seaboard, um, down through North Carolina. If you look on the Eastern seaboard there, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and then all the way across, um, all the way to Arizona and then up the Western uh, seaboard, up through California, through Oregon, through Washington state, and then we cross the border um, into British Columbia, Canada. So let's see. This is uh, this is Eva, my my wife, 1995. So um, well, that's a 1995 Suzuki Sidekick. So we we bought that in '96, and um, it was right around, I believe, right around the April time frame. And so it was still fairly cool. Um, so we stopped off on the side of the road um, to snap a picture here. And as you can see, there's a, the license plate still has the dealer plates on it. So we hadn't actually registered it yet. Um, next slide here is of the USS Constitution. So, um, you know, as the slide, as the slide says, um, um, it's also known as Old Ironsides. And the reason it's known as Old Ironsides is because uh, during the war, um, when cannonballs were shot at it, um, the cannonballs were not able to, um, to penetrate the hull of the ship. And, you know, as a consequence, they called it Old Ironsides because they um, likened it to, to it being so, so strong and, um, and made of iron. Anyway, this ship is 220 years old, 222 years old, rather, and it's moored in Boston Harbor. It, uh, it continues to hold a commission. In other words, it is still part of the um, US Navy's fleet, but it is, uh, it's, it's merely a showboat now, and that is, um, it's essentially a museum, right? So I'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, and so here's another picture of, of the iron sides, of old iron sides from a different vantage point. Um, I think annually, uh, what they do is they take old iron sides out into Boston Harbor itself, and it's typically um, it's typically sailed by um, midshipmen from the U.S. Naval Academy. Yeah, and uh, and as you can see, there are flags um, that are um, being streamed from one mast to another, and down to the brow of the ship and um, to the to the aft flag. And so those are called ship's colors, right? And ship's colors are flags that, uh, that, that naval vessels typically would um, be dressed in during, um, uh, during a special occasion, right? All righty, next slide here. Um, while we were in Boston, we, um, we visited um, the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. Um, and it's a beautiful museum um, made up to be like a, um, an old Venetian and old Italian um, magnate's home. Countless uh, beautiful um, artwork that's, that's there. Um, I believe, I don't remember clearly, but I believe Isabella Stewart Gardner's husband was a, uh, I believe he was an iron magnate. So he made his money from from iron and um, I think transportation, but that's how the um, the company, uh, that's how the the family rather, came to be uh, so rich. And um, at a certain point in their life, uh, Isabella uh, started to collect 
um, works of art. Um, I think she had spent some time in Italy. And so, so there's a very strong um, Italian influence in, um, in the museum. And the museum itself, um, it's, it's just absolutely gorgeous. But at one time, it was the gardener home, right? So yeah. So if you ever get a chance to travel to Boston, I, I highly recommend it. It's a beautiful museum. Um, I'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. And here's another uh, <clears throat> picture of the museum from uh, from a different vantage point. And on the balcony there, you can you know you can barely see us. We're little people on the on the balcony. But there's Eva and my friend Jim, and I'm uh, uh, actually that's Leslie, Jim's Jim's girlfriend. And as you can see, you know the um, the windows in the balconies they're um, they're a Venetian sort of a um, um, design. And I believe up there at the top in the middle window, I think that may be St. Mark's, uh, uh, the line of St. Mark, right? Okay, let's move on to the next slide. While in Boston, we had to go to FAO Schwartz. Now, FAO Schwartz is a huge toy store in Boston. We were, you know, much younger than we are now. So, of course, we had to go there and sort of uh, check out the toy store. Yeah. Um, Another picture of the FAO Schwartz, uh, but of course this is this is inside, and um, it's just if you're a child, um, this is just it is just total bliss if you're a child, right? Going through this door, yeah. Um, this is a picture of me and Eva in uh, Danvers at one of the local parks, and so what we did was we uh, we bought a few uh, loaves of bread. And uh, we just had a fantastic time feeding the uh, feeding the ducks and the seagulls, and um, yeah, they were quite happy that we were there as well. Um, <laughs> let's see here. And once again, you know, um, in a live audience, the reason I keep coming back to this slide and the other slide with the icons is because I would just sort of, you know, um, prompt uh, attendees um, about different uh, states. Um, and, um, you know, so it would be more interactive, but of course we can't really do that here. So I apologize for that. I'll go ahead and move to the next slide. Uh -huh. So this is, um, this is the Gillette Castle State Park. So um, this, uh, this state park is in Connecticut, which is on the Eastern seaboard of the United States. Um, it's in the state of Connecticut. Um, and William Gillette, at one time, I believe he was a, you know, um, I think he was an actor back in maybe the, uh, I think the 30s, I believe. But anyway, William Gillette played um, played Sherlock Holmes, um, and, and he was, you know, pretty famous for his day. Um, this castle that you see um, was, um, I believe they had uh, disassembled the castle, dismantled the castle from, from wherever it was, and uh, shipped to the States and reassembled there in Gillette Park. And this, of course, was his, uh, was his home at one time. Um, and I believe at a certain point, um, um, the estate and so forth was, uh, was essentially donated to the state. And so now it's, it's part of a, um, a state park. Yeah, Gillette Castle, very beautiful. And it overlooks the, uh, it overlooks the Connecticut River. Here we go. Next slide. So um, 1853 to 1937, that is, uh, so William Gillette was born in 1853 and he passed away in 1937. And there's the little, uh, you know, Sherlock Holmes icon uh, of, uh, of him. And here we are, uh, yeah, here's a picture of uh, me and Eva. And as I mentioned to you, um, it's a beautiful um, site where that actual home is located. And it overlooks the Connecticut River. That's, uh, that's the Connecticut River to the, um, to, to the right of, uh, of the lower two pictures, yeah. All righty, so going back to this picture again, yeah, I wish this were interactive. Um, and hopefully in the upcoming days, um, upcoming months, you know, our COVID stance will change and we can have, uh, you know, we can have in-person 
um, presentations and, and so forth, and we can get get a little bit more of more more interaction from uh, from from the attendees and so forth because that's uh, that's lots of fun, lots of fun, and um, you know we're not able to do that now. Let's see here, yeah, and as we headed down south from. Uh, from Boston, we stopped in. Um, we stopped in Washington D.C., and here is a view of uh, of the National Mall. So, in the foreground, um, that white structure in the foreground is the Lincoln Memorial, and just beyond it is the um, is the reflecting pool, right? And and this whole strip that you see from from the Washington, excuse me, from the Lincoln Memorial, the white building to the pool. And then beyond that is the obelisk, which is called the National Monument. Monument, and beyond that is more of the National Mall. And and on either side of the National Mall is our our, our museums. You know, part of the Smithsonian Museum um, array of museums. Um, and um, and then beyond that, of course, is the nation's capital where, uh, where Congress sits and so on. Um, if you ever have the opportunity to, to go to Washington, DC, please do take it. I, um, I spent most of my life overseas and I came to the United States for the first time in um, 1976. I was, uh, I was uh, 65, 75, I was 11 years old. And um, I had always wanted to go to Washington, D.C. And as a kid, I would, you know, read the Smithsonian uh, magazine. And um, finally, when I was right around um, 19 or 20 years old, I had the opportunity to go to D.C. and visit the museums. And it was just a, it was such a fantastic treat. And they're all free as well. So do take advantage of that, please. All right, let me go ahead and uh, move on to the next slide. William. Can I yeah. please interrupt you? Sure, of uh, course. We have, <laughs> we have a small question from our audience. So of course. Bogdana, Bogdana is asking, how much time do you think a person needs to visit every state of the US in a row? Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, I think you would need a lifetime. I think you would need a lifetime. I mean, and um, you know, I, um, I think, you know, I, I think, I think traveling is important, but I think it's also important not to sort of just check the box and go to this place and that place just to say that you've been there. Of course, you want to visit some of these iconic sites, but I think it's also important to kind of uh, um, to do it as, at a leisurely pace so that you can kind of absorb um, where you are and kind of enjoy it. You know, otherwise it becomes too much like work. Uh, so the short story, I think it would take a lifetime because there are so many uh, fantastic things that are in the United States, uh, many places that I have actually not been to. And my wife and I, you know, we're both foreign born, we're both American citizens. Um, but when we do retire, you know, we're doing a lot of overseas traveling right now. For instance, you know, Kiev, the Ukraine, um, it is a beautiful country and we you know, we've seen a little bit of it and we look forward to seeing so much more of it. Um, yeah, it would take a lifetime. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, actually, we at America House have a, a friend of ours and um, he did an exhibition called Unseen America. So he showed some pictures of unseen places and not popular places in the United States. And it's so cool and wonderful that there are so many spots to stop in the US. Like there are some really popular and most visited places like New York, Washington. And there are so amazing places that I wish to go to. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, you know, I think that, you know, the, the, the really popular places, you know, like the New Yorks, the DCs, Atlanta, Seattle, and so forth. I mean, they, they're beautiful in their own right, but, but I think what's really neat also is to travel some of the back roads and to um, to visit some of the smaller towns because there's there's a lot um, that can be found there that's that's quite interesting as well. But it depends on also what your tastes are, right? 
Sure. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. I think we can go back with the Okay, sure, of course. Yeah, so um, yeah, so here is a, a different perspective of the National Ball Mall. And of course, back in 1995, um, they were still doing a lot of work um, on the Lincoln Memorial itself. And so um, to the right of that picture, there's this structure that typically would not be there. That all would be sort of flat, but it's, uh, I believe it's office, uh, um, offices for those people that were doing work on the uh, Lincoln Memorial. Yeah. And let's see, next picture, once again, uh, a nice, uh, nice picture of the various, uh, the United States and, and, and different colored states. And um, of course, we stopped in, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, which is the headquarters for CNN. And that was really, that was, that was an incredible trip because what we were able to do then and what we would be able to do now are night and day. You know, we live in a, unfortunately, we live in a difficult, uh, difficult and different world now. And, um, and so, you know, we were able to, to go into this area overlooking the newsroom and so forth. And so we were just right there so close to the, because to the reporters and, and so forth. But uh, I, don't, I don't think that would be possible nowadays. But anyway, headquarters of CNN in Atlanta, Georgia, deep in the South. Right, and here's a picture of Eva um, at the CNN Center. And um, that is the picture of the US again with the various icons. Um, and let's see, yeah. So um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, I spent some of, my, um, some of my teenage years in Louisiana. So I'm very familiar with these, uh, uh, these little fellows here, these alligators, right? Um, and so they, they don't typically, um, you know, they, they're, they're not typically aggressive uh, towards humans. Um, the only time that they would be aggressive is if, uh, if the mother alligator um, might have just recently hatched some baby alligators. And of course, the only reason that the mother would be aggressive is if, uh, if you get close to her nest and she feels that you're... Um, you're a danger. You're a threat to her um, to her baby gators. But otherwise, they they don't they don't bother people. Um, there's a picture of me, and in the background there, I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's an airboat there, and that's typically what's uh, what's used to travel in the swamp. Um, of course, you you can't use a uh, uh, an outboard motor because it would just get uh, entangled with weeds and, and so forth. And so what people do is they affix these huge engines to the back of a, um, of a boat. And then, you know, they uh, affix a, um, a propeller to it. So it's essentially uh, an airplane engine in the back of the boat and the boat sort of just skims across the surface of the water. It's called an airboat, right? Um, very common in, in, in Louisiana, Mississippi, and in swampy areas. Florida, for instance, as well, has uh, lots of uh, airboats. Um, and here is Eva in one of the airboats. Yeah, and uh, they're lots of fun to, uh, uh, to drive. They're, they're very fast. And um, yeah, lots of fun, lots of fun. All right, once again, picture of the United States. And here is a picture of the Alamo. So, um, so Texas is down sort of in the southern part of, uh, of the United States. And it, of course, borders, uh, borders our neighbors to the south, Mexico. And the Alamo um, is, uh, um, was where um, a, a huge battle was fought between the United States and Mexico and and there's a uh, there's a familiar saying um, that goes like this: Remember the Alamo. And what happened in the Alamo is that there were um, American soldiers there, uh, American soldier, soldiers, American frontiersmen, and they were fighting. Uh, I believe it was General Santa Ana on the Mexican side, and um, so the soldiers in the American soldiers in the Alamo. Um, they fought till the very end, till every single one of them had died. But um, Santa Ana, the Mexican general, um, allowed 
um, the soldiers in the Alamo, those that were wounded, uh, women and children that were li living there. He permitted them to leave before, um, you know, before the battle was fought until the very end. And so remember the Alamo essentially means to, to fight to the very end um, to Americans. San Antonio, Texas, another really beautiful place. Um, and in San Antonio, there is a river. It's called the San Antonio River. And um, at one point in San Antonio's history, the, the San Antonio River was, um, it was actually, it was essentially a cesspool. So it was, it was just, just dirty. It was just horrible. Um, and, and it was essentially the shame of the city. Um, but at, at a certain point in its history, um, the city administrators and the people of, of San Antonio um, lobbied to have the river cleaned, and, um, and they did. And after cleaning the river, they decided to sort of uh, um, build um, what is there now, and that is um, high rises, businesses, uh, dining areas, and they turned what it one time was an eyesore into a real um, draw for the city. So it's, it's, a, it's such a beautiful area. And they have these little boats uh, that um, sort of plod through there so that you can um, see um, you know, uh, the areas uh, around the, the San Antonio River. So let me move on to the next page here. Once again, another uh, picture of the US. And if you look down towards the bottom of the screen, do you see the big blue part sort of bottom right Gulf of Mexico? So to the left of that, to the left of the red fish, you have uh, an offshore rig. So typically um, there's a lot of uh, uh, oil exploration in the Gulf of Mexico. And then if you move to the further to the left, you have the turtle to the left of that and above you have the the jackalope, which is the, the rabbit with, with the huge ears. And to the left of that is an icon of the, uh, of the Alamo, what we were just talking about. Yeah. All righty. And um, down in the, in the southwestern part of the United States, uh, we stopped in San Diego, San Diego, California. And uh, we visited Balboa Park there. And um, we stopped at the... Uh, at the Polish part of, uh, of, that, uh, of that park because there were a bunch of little houses from, from, uh, from different countries in the world. And the reason we did that is because uh, Eva is Polish, she's a Polish American. And so we had to stop there, right? And if I would have been married to an Ukrainian American, well, we would have stopped at the Ukrainian house. Yeah, anyway, um, let me move on to the next page. We moved a bit further north from San Diego to Sequoia National Park. And so the trees that you see in this snapshot are of a tree that they call the General Sherman. So it is, it's not one of the, it's a very old tree, but I think it's the, the largest living thing in the world. Yeah. And these trees, they're called redwood trees and they're just absolutely incredible. You know, when you, when you walk through these, uh, um, through these um, protected forests of redwoods, it's it's just incredible. You you feel so small. You know what I mean? I mean, look at the picture of me. I mean, I'm just. Um, I guess I would be no larger than an ant if you had to compare, right? But it's just beautiful. On to the next slide, and so here we are on the um, on the west coast. We are um, on Highway One. Uh, which is the, um, the state highway that, um, that goes along the coast of California. Um, it goes from, um, I'm not so sure how far down, maybe San Luis Obispo, up through Big Sur, all the way up to Carmel by the sea, and all the way up towards uh, San Francisco. But anyway, um, <clears throat> there's a picture of me up at the top, and down at the bottom is Eva, and to her right, I don't know if you can make that out, but to her right um, is a beach full of elephant seals, right? And so um, back in 95, we didn't do this because we didn't want to disturb the, um, the elephant seals. 
but we could have actually walked down to the beach and touched them. Of course, you don't want to do that because, um, you know, it would startle them and they, they, they can be aggressive. Um, we stopped there a few years ago, maybe about five or six years ago. And this whole area now is, um, is fenced. And there are special walkways where you can walk so that you don't get too close to the elephant seals and bother them. But um, yeah, so, so 95 until present day, you know, a lot of, a lot of things have changed um, for sure. Let me go ahead and move to the next slide. Um, this is Monterey Bay. Uh, a couple of photos of Monterey Bay, um, California. And so Monterey Bay is just a little bit south of San Francisco. And what it is famous for is it's famous for uh, um, whale watching, right? And so the California coast, it sort of goes out a little bit and then it just plunges dramatically um, uh, because of the continental shelf. And so it's very, very deep, just, just off the coast. And um, so lots of whales, uh, lots of sea otters, a lot of, uh, lot of aquatic sea life there. All right, let me move on to the next slide here. And um, let me see, up at the top is, uh, is a picture from, uh, I think it was from Sausalito, which is uh, the small town that's just on the other side of the Bay Bridge, that, uh, that red structure you know, the, the, the iconic uh, San Francisco Bay Bridge. Uh, actually, it's the Golden Gate Bridge. I should clarify that. It's the Golden Gate Bridge. That's the one that looks a little bit red behind um, Eva there. But anyway, so that's a shot of that. And then the, the next one in the middle, it's not a very good picture actually, but it's just a, a shot of uh, Chinatown. There's a huge Chinatown in, um, in San Francisco. So if you love Chinese food, that's definitely, um, the place to go. And it feels very, very, um, it feels American, but it also feels very Chinese because, because there's such a huge, uh, huge population of, of, of Chinese there. Um, and then down below is, well, there's another picture of us uh, in Chinatown. Yeah. And I guess that's all I have for, for my, um, for my presentation. Uh, Maria, I don't know if you have any questions, but I, I'm more than happy to, to try to answer some questions if there are any. Thank you so much for this presentation. I understand that I already miss so much all these trips and things connected to the traveling, like those tickets and souvenirs and like, yeah. Uh, actually, we have some questions from our audience. Sure. Uh, so uh, Marina commented that she saw this giant sequoia on your photos and it's incredible. This just was a short comment when you presented that, those sequoia park. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really beautiful. So there are, two, there are two parks in Central California that are, they're state parks. And so these two state parks are connected to one another. One is called Sequoia National Park, and the other one is called Kings Canyon, right? And they're just, um, so Sequoia National Park, um, I can't remember, but, but sequoias, they only grow at a certain altitude, right? They only grow at a certain altitude, so they can't grow, they can't grow at sea level, and they can't grow very, very high. So they live... Um, Gosh, I can't remember. I, I would have to look it up, but maybe, I don't know, maybe um, thousand, no, maybe about, maybe like 700 meters, 800 meters. I'm just guessing, so please don't quote me, but they, they do have to live at a certain altitude. Um, yeah, it's, if you get a chance, please go to it. There are some redwood forests also a bit north of it. Um, I believe uh, closer to San Francisco on the coast. Um, these trees, they're very shallow root trees. And so what happens is because the roots are so shallow, um, they are prey to high winds. And what I mean by that is when there are high winds, because the roots are so, so shallow, they don't, you know, they don't, um, they don't have a lot of support. And so they, they tend to fall over when there are high winds. Yeah. But, awesome. Yeah. 
Marina actually already commented that uh, I already dreamed to visit that Sequoia Park. So thanks <laughs> very, for sharing. <laughs> very good. I, I, I hope I hope you do visit it, and I hope you uh, you. I'm, I'm sure you'll be just as enthralled with it as as Ava and I were. It's uh, you know it's there are so many places all throughout the world that uh, that are just so incredibly beautiful. I mean these these just happen to be in the United States, but I mean you know. Um, I, I look forward to traveling a lot more of Ukraine and seeing um, more of this beautiful country that uh, that you're you know that you're a citizen of. Yes, I hope so. Okay, we have one more question. So, sure. William, uh, you mentioned that you've been to so many different places, but uh, our viewer Artem is wondering, what's your favorite place? Oh my gosh! You know what? I, I think every place, every place is a jewel. I mean, it's just like, you know, I'm asked, you know, which, which place do you like working the best in? Which country do you like the best? I think, I think every place is a fantastic experience. And right now my favorite place is Kiev. Why? Because I'm living here, because my family, you know, my, my wife and I are living here. Um, and the next place that I go to, um, I will say that that is the, the greatest place and and i and so i'm not saying you know i'm i'm, I'm i wouldn't be little kiev after i leave here or be little other countries but but what i'm saying is there's so many so many wonderful places and it's just it's just so hard to to pick one out because we've we've been so fortunate and had um such good experiences you know in all the places that we've been to yeah. exactly <laughs> exactly uh, we have one more question from Margarita, and she is asking William, "What is the most unusual place you got to visit in the U.S.?" In the U.S.? Oh gosh, in the U.S. Um, unusual. Well, I don't want to say unusual, but let, let's say unique, because unique is better than unusual. Because unusual has like a, you know, depending on who the listener is, it could have like a maybe a negative spin. Um, hmm, I guess, you know, I spent some of my teenage years in Louisiana. And um, when I was there, I would, uh, you know, I would drive airboats, I would drive bateaus, you know, uh, flat bottom boats, I would hunt, I would trap, I would fish. Um, and I, and I think, I think you, I think Louisiana is very unique from other states, because uh, Louisiana was a, at one time, it was a French um, colony. And, um, and so all the other states are broken down into counties, you know, the different parts of a state. Whereas in Louisiana, you, you have parishes, um, you know, lots of, uh, lots of swamps, lots of, uh, lots of interesting uh, wildlife and plant life, you know, you've got uh, Spanish moss, you know, Spanish moss. And, and so the thing about Spanish moss is it's, it's bioluminescent, which essentially means that, um, you know, it kind of glows in the dark. And so I remember as kids, you know, we used to maybe walk through the woods at night. And, um, you know, sometimes we would see some of, the, some of the Spanish moss hanging that was glowing. And of course, you know, we're foolish kids. And so we're, um, making up stories and trying to scare one another about these pieces of moss being ghosts and things like that. So, so I guess, I guess that uh, that's one unique thing about that area. Um, yeah. That's so interesting. And I should go and check these places after our presentation. Yeah. So <laughs> we have one really interesting question from Marina. Uh, so she's asking, have you been to Kennedy Space Center in Florida where they launch rockets? You know, I would love to go to the Ken Ken Kennedy Space Center. I have not been to it, um, to the Kennedy Space Center. And I believe what there's like a, uh, it's Mar Marina, Marina. It's, it sounds like you're one of these, uh, you're, you're a space buff, right? So I'm sure you probably followed the, uh, uh, Ingenuity and uh, you know the the, the Mars rover and um, and the copter. So I'm, I'm sure you were like you know glued to the TV 
or, or the internet watching it. But um, no, short answer, I've never been to the Kennedy Space Center. Would I love to go to it? Absolutely. But I think there's another place. Uh, it's in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but there's a space camp there. Um, children, young adults, teenagers, uh, adults um, can go there and they usually have like a space camp, space week. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, um, you might want to might want to look at that as well. It's in Huntsville, Alabama. I think it's a space camp. Maybe you can look that up on the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Marina is also asking, have you seen any launch space shuttle or crew Dragon rockets? And I guess no. Well, I when I was in the Navy back in 80, I think back in 86, I think it was in 86, I was in South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, and I did see not very close, but I, I saw that, uh, um, I saw a space shuttle sort of, uh, you know, take off from the airplane that it was attached to um, and head into outer space. So um, yeah, I guess I did, yeah. Wow, that might be so exciting. Okay, thank you. Um, Thank you guys for asking your questions. We have uh, like a couple questions left. Sure. Uh, so question from Pavel. Uh, hi, William, is there any place in the USA you have never been to and want to visit in the future? Oh my goodness, yeah. I mean, lots of places, yeah. Um, gosh. <laughs> I know mm. these questions are so tough for you to answer. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I guess um, my, my wife and I, we, we, we really love to, you know, we love to hike and, and um, kayak and, and, you know, do lots of outdoor, outdoors type things. I hope that when we're, um, I hope that when we finally retire that we'll still be in good health and good shape. And I would love to go to Colorado and do some skiing there and, you know, go to Utah and do some, uh, some hiking there. Um, um, explore more of Washington State, the state that we that we plan to move to. Um, so I guess I guess those three places would be fine: Utah, Colorado, Washington State. But you know, there's so many uh, so many different um, um, parts of the United States that we haven't visited. You know, the the U.S. If you want to look at it, the U.S. is is about two thousand miles from south to north, plus or minus, and then about 3,000 miles from, from the west coast to the east coast. And in that, um, in that terrain, the topology can change from, from rainforest to swamp to mountains to desert. And so, you know, it's a very, it's quite a varied, um, quite a varied land mass, right? Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> there are so many places actually to go to and spend time with your family or like friends and yeah yeah uh, marina also sent her comment uh, she's thanking you william and hope if you happen to be in Dnipro, you will love it too where to i'm sorry uh to Dnipro. Dnik oh the Dnipro, the, the river uh, that's the city in Ukraine. Oh, what is it called? Dnipro. Dnipro. Okay, it's on my list, and I will make sure that we will go to visit it. Thank you so much for your for your recommendation. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Um, we have one more question from Artem. Thank you, Artem, for being so active tonight. Um, so he is asking, have you been to Hawaii? Yes, as a matter of fact, we lived in Hawaii for about three years. I know it's it's a tough life. I was in the Navy, so if, if that makes you feel better. So it was, it was a tough life. Um, but I was in Hawaii for, we were in Hawaii for about three years. Um, we were on the island of Oahu, which is where the capital is, Honolulu. And so we lived in the, um, in the middle part of the island um, near Mililani. Um, and that was where my, uh, my daughter was born. Uh, she was born in 1997 there. And um, yeah, three years there. Um, 
beautiful island, beautiful, beautiful chain of islands. Um, we were there for three years. And then after Hawaii, um, after Hawaii, we moved to Japan. We lived in Japan for about, uh, for about six years. Yeah, for about six years. And for a very long time, uh, for a very long time, um, my children thought they were Japanese, <laughs> you know, because that's, that's all they knew. You know, my son was born in Japan. Louisa was born in Hawaii. And um, I remember, um, I remember going to, uh, to the school one day and um, you know how children, um, they, you know, they, they, they draw a picture, a little stick picture of themselves and some, and then they, they draw like maybe a, a picture of the flag or, you know, they try to. And um, so we're looking and looking and we couldn't find my son Jacob's uh, picture. And then at a certain point we realized it's, it said, hi, my name is Jacob. Um, I'm Japanese. I'm from Japan, you know, and there was a little Japanese flag. And so, um, yeah, so, so I think, uh, you know, it's, it's wonderful to, to live in all these places, but I think sometimes it's, it's challenging. Well, it's challenging, but it's also a great experience, I think, for the kids because, um, because they truly are, you know, they truly are citizens of the world because they move from place to place and they're able to, to see how other people live, to, 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 to learn firsthand how other people think. Um, yeah, so the short answer, yes, I have lived in Hawaii. <laughs> oh, that's all right, thank you so much. Uh, we have one question from Maxim, and he is asking how much money did you spend on this trip? Of course, if you could share. On this trip, uh, well, I tried to use my, my wife's credit card as much as possible, Maxim, so that helped a lot. <laughs> um, no, I was just trying to be funny. Um, I don't remember how much we spent, but, um, but we definitely did not stay in five-star hotels you know we were young we were newlyweds um and we were just we were just happy to be in the united states we were just happy to travel and to to visit these places um and, and bear in mind i was um i was still in the navy i was a uh, a member of the u.s military i was in the navy and I was um, stationed my assignment was in italy i i worked in italy for about um for about five years, I, I worked at uh, um, at a U.S. national base um, for. Well, first I worked at uh, at NATO. I worked at NATO for three years, um, and then I worked at a U.S. national base for two years. And during um, that, the last year, right in the middle of that tour. Um, the, the Balkan Wars was sort of um, in, um, in, in full swing, so to speak. Um, and so um, they needed um, an Italian translator down, down south at a U.S. base uh, um, in, in near Brindisi uh, on the Adriatic. And so I volunteered to go down there and I worked as a translator there for, um, for about six months or so. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you so much. I actually have one question connected to your answer. Uh, so do an ordinary American family with a middle income have an opportunity to travel? And uh, another one question, do, do you have any tips how to spend less during the trip? Would be really interesting to know. Could you say that one more time? So, can the average can the average family afford a trip like that? Yep. And what was the second part? I'm sorry. The second one was: Do you have any tips and tricks how to spend less during the trip? How to spend oh less during less. the trip? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, like I said, you know, we we um, we definitely uh, we definitely were not rich. I mean. You know, if you're in the mil if you're in the U.S. military, um, I think what the military gives a lot of young um, service men, service women, is um, you know, of course, you you have the opportunity to serve your country 
Um, but a lot of your basic need, needs are met, you know, um, on a lot of our military bases, there are um, gyms and hospitals and dental and so forth and so on. So a lot of your core needs are met. So um, all of these things would cost money if you had to buy gym membership and hospital and so forth. So, so um, you know, so you don't make a whole lot of money. So um, I was not making a lot of money. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, we didn't stay in um, five-star hotels. I think you can, you know, as, as you research um, where to stay and where to go and so forth, I think you can, um, I think you can have a good vacation and not have to spend a whole lot of money. It depends on what you want to splurge with, you know, instead of, for instance, instead of going to restaurants, you know, you could always, you know, stop at a supermarket and um, you know, and get some food there. And 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 you know, I I actually enjoy, you know, we actually enjoy doing that. And what I mean by that is, you know, you can go to a supermarket, maybe go to the deli section and get sandwiches or pizza or, or salad or sushi or whatever, and you know, find a nice place in the park and um, you know, take a drive, stop, nice place in the park, or you know, some place to stop and have a nice lunch there and, you know, sort of have a picnic. So, so the picnic doesn't cost you, you know, 60, $70. It costs you, you know, a, a fraction of that. And um, yeah. And so um, I think lodging, food, fuel, you can't really do a whole lot with it. Fuel is, is what it costs. Right. Um, and if you want to drive, um, you know, car rental. At first, we looked at renting a car and driving it from the East Coast and dropping it off the West Coast. Um, at the time, that was going to cost us, back in 95, that was going to cost us, I think, about $3,500 to do that, to do a one-way rental. And so, you know, Eva and I talked about it, and we decided, you know, let's just buy a car and take that $3,500 and put it into the car. You know, at least the car will be ours after. Um, of course, if you're not from the United States, you know, you might, uh, um, you, that might not be an option because, you know, what are you going to do with the car when you get to the other end, right? Um, there are, um, you know, you can cross the country by train, you know, by bus. Um, yeah, I, I think train, bus, um, there are companies that need to get cars from one side of the country to another. So of course you could, um, you could volunteer for that service. But when you do that, um, you need to go from point A to point B uh, in a certain amount of time. And so you don't have the luxury of stopping. So you're really driving for the company, right? So that, that's not much fun. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Did I, did I answer your question, Maria, or was I rambling? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. Yes, you yeah. actually answered my questions. And actually, in my daily routine, I just try, when I'm going somewhere, I'm just trying to follow in almost the same rules. Just like, uh, as a student, I'd like to go like somewhere abroad, but I need to spend less money that I have just to leave something. So yeah. I will go and find a hostel and uh, a hostel. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, and I think by my own. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, and I think you know. I remember many years ago when I um, I was on a work uh, trip. I was on a work trip with a workmate and she, she said, Hey, Will, let's get on the local bus, you know, and we'll just ride the full circle and we'll see, you know, we'll see all of Marseille, at least the route. And, you know, and it cost us, I don't know, a dollar, right? It cost us a dollar. We didn't have to pay the hop on the hop off. And it was really, it was really neat to see, you know, um, you know, to see the city from, from the school bus. And it was nice that we didn't have to pay, say, $50 for, for the stop on, you know, hop on, hop off uh, bus, um, bus fare. So that's another way to kind of save money. I think, um, yeah, I think food, transportation, and lodging, right? Those are the three big things. So, so if you can kind of 
if you can cut corners with with lodging, not stay in five stars, but just make sure that you um, that wherever you stay, like like in the hostels, youth hostels, you know they're a, they're a great. Um, I think they're a great thing for 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 young travelers, you know, um, because they give you the the the, the bare necessities, a, a clean place to sleep that's safe. Uh, you can shower, and you know the next day you meet other people that um, that uh, that are you know, roughly your age and uh, with the same um, sort of uh, um, interests that you do, hopefully, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And I have fingers crossed to have an opportunity in the nearest future to travel abroad and, again, to feel the same emotions and feel the same experience as they did. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, uh, gosh, it's been such a such a crazy year and a half for all of us. I think, I think all of us all throughout the world are just, you know, we feel, um, you know, we feel pent up and, and we're ready to travel and be with one another again. And, you know, and, but we're still, you know, we're still constrained by, um, by the virus and so forth, but I, but I hope things will, will change soon for all of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Okay, we are even a bit uh, close to the end. Uh, and we have one, I think, the last question from Maxim. And he is asking, are you planning to travel to Ukraine? Do I plan to travel in Ukraine? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, uh, yeah, we, we haven't traveled a lot. I mean, we've done a lot of walking in Kiev, to be honest. Um, I love walking this city. I mean, the there are some, there are some incredible buildings here, and um, I love the people. I love the restaurants. You know, um, we're able to, you know, of course, sit in restaurants and eat now. Um, typically, we, we 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 try to do that outside, but I, I think there's so much variety here in Kiev. Uh, we have traveled to Chernihiv. Uh, that was that was a very nice trip. Um, my children. Um, they will be here. Uh, my son will be here Saturday. And then my daughter, uh, I have a 17 year old um, son and a 27 year old daughter. And um, so my son will be here this weekend. My daughter will be here uh, in the middle of June. And we look forward to, uh, to showing them beautiful Kiev um, to, um, you know, to head down to Odessa and stop off in Uman and a couple of other uh places. I don't think we'll be able to go to Lviv while my daughter is here because she's only here for two weeks. So maybe we'll have to do Lviv um, with her um, during another trip, but my son will be here for the whole summer. So we definitely will go to Lviv and um, check out the, uh, the city itself and then the, the Carpathian uh, area. Um, in Ivana Frankis, right? Ivana Frankis, yeah, that whole area. And um, gosh, I'd like, I'd love to get out on the river, on the Dnipro here, and do a bit of kayaking and learn um, about where there are some trails here uh, near Kiev, and do a bit of hiking and exploring. Um, yeah, I look forward to seeing a lot more of uh, a lot more of Ukraine, Maxim. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do a lot more traveling. Yeah, thank you for asking that question. So many places to visit here in Ukraine, and I wish all of your family have a great time here too. And guys, yeah, if you have any recommendations where William could go with his family or alone, please write them down and we will yeah, pass those recommendations to him. <laughs> yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much for, for, uh, for, for broadcasting that to our viewers, Maria. That would be super. Yeah, please, whatever tips you have, um, Please give them to us so that we can enjoy, can enjoy this beautiful country of yours. Thank you. All right. So thank you so much, William, for joining us tonight, sharing your personal stories, your experience, some beautiful places and sightseeing in America. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that our participants find it really interesting and maybe even one day they will travel to the United States too. Absolutely, yes. 
Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Have a great evening and join us for the next virtual events here at America House. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye everyone, good night. <laughs>